Perhaps you have an image of a product that you need a 3D model of. So how do you take the 2D image and create a 3D object out of it? Here's how you do it. So let's create a new project and we're gonna delete these stuff because we don't need them and we're gonna change our render engine to cycles. Now what we want to do is we want to bring in the reference image to Blender to start modeling. So if we press 1 on the key numpad we go into side view and inside view we're gonna add an object with shift A. We go down to image and reference. Now locate your image and import. So what we get here is basically a plane with the image on it. So we can use this as a reference. So if we go back into side view again with numpad one, we are gonna start, start blocking out the rough shape of the bottle. So what you wanna do is you wanna think about what basic geometry would fit the product that you're trying to model. So as this is a bottle, a cylinder would be the best choice for us. So we're gonna start by importing a cylinder and we're gonna use S and drag to scale it down. So now we wanna align it to the rough shape of the bottle. So we're gonna use G to move the object and we're gonna scale it up a bit like that. And now we wanna move it down to the bottom of the bottle. So G again and to move on the Z axis we can press Z and just drag it down. Now we want to extrude this cylinder to fit the whole shape of the bottle. So we need to go into edit mode by pressing tab and we need to extrude this up to the top of the bottle. Just a side note, if you were to select these vertices and start moving them like this in side view everything looks fine but if you go into perspective view and go on the back here you can see that the back vertices didn't the issue here is that we are only selecting the vertices that we can see from this view to fix this if we just go back and undo what we did here we need to go into something called x-ray mode so up here this toggle right here toggles what we call x-ray mode and what this does is that everything in the select box gets selected even it's if it's behind other vertices or objects. So now if we select from our side view everything behind is also getting selected. So that's exactly what we want. So with this top vertices selected we're gonna move them up by pressing G and Z again and we're gonna move them up to the top of the bottle here. Now if we zoom in a little you can see here quite blurry but if but the bottle actually goes under the cap the neck of the bottle so to create this what we want to do is we want to press E and that creates an extrusion of the vertices that we had selected and we want to align them with the bottom of the neck here and then if we press S to scale down and we scale them down to align with the neck and then extrude up again, we create this neck right here. All right, so now we have the glass ball modeled and we wanna continue uh, modeling the cap. So to do this, we're just gonna keep extruding and do the rough shape of the cap as well. So if we press E and scale up, and then we press E again to bring it up, and E, scale, E, bring up, and there you go. So if we go out of edit mode with tab and we go out of x-ray mode, we can take a look at the rough model here. And we can actually also remove the reference image. And as you see, we have the rough shape, but it's still quite uh, choppy and not as smooth as the reference so we're gonna fix this so how we're gonna do is we're gonna select object object again and we're gonna go into to um, edit mode with tab 
and we need to smooth out these edges to begin with. So how we're going to do this is we're going to go into edge select mode so that we can select whole edges and holding alt we can select the whole edge all around the object. So with the edge selected we're going to press ctrl B to create a bevel and if we now drag down you can see here we create a bevel around the whole edge. When we do this we can see here that the bevel is quite harsh as well and to fix this we're going to use the scroll wheel to scroll up and that creates more bevel steps to create more vertices. Alright so when it looks good you can just left click to select and repeat on all the other edges. So now we have fixed the edges and we're looking quite good. Um, now we can see the geometry is a bit choppy. This is because we need to set the shade to smooth by right click and shade to smooth. If we bring back the uh, reference, you can see here the Balu got a nozzle here, a white nozzle. And actually the easiest way to do that is just add another cylinder, scale it down and place it roughly where the nozzle is. Now if you want to rotate stuff on an axis you can press R and select the axis uh, Z, X or Y on your keyboard and if you hold control you can actually snap to an increment of 5 uh, on the angle. So you can see here we get exactly 90 degrees. Now we need to move it by pressing G and bring it out just a little. And we just want the nozzle here to be visible but not extruding too much. Now we've got the rough shape of the whole bottle, we're going to start applying the materials. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into shading and now the issue is that if we were to add a new material, uh, you can either go into material here or new, or if you have object selected here, you can press new here. All right, so now we have this material added. If we were to change this to a different color, you can see there that the whole bottle is changing. And actually what we want to do is we want to have separate materials for uh, every part of the bottle. So how we do this is we go into edit mode again. We're going to make sure we have x-ray mode activated. We're going to go into side view. So what we, what we want to do here is we want to select the different parts that are ha going to have different materials. So if we choose face select here, we can start selecting the faces that will have the same material. So we're going to start with the cap and make sure everything here is selected and nothing is selected by mistake. And we're going to create a new material and we're going to name this cap and assign. So now we're going to assign the material to the vertices that we have selected. So now if we were to change the color, you can see here the whole bottle is still changing. but that is gonna be fixed when we assign a new material to the rest of the bottle. So now we have the cap selected and we want to select the rest of the bottle except for the cap. So how do you do this? The easiest way to do this is to invert our selection and you can easily do this by pressing Ctrl and I. Now if we create a new material by pressing plus here, new and we can name this bottle and click assign. So now we got two separate materials for each object. So let's start with the glass bottle here. And what we want to do actually is we gonna we want to create a glass material. So I deleted the default material and we're going to add a glass now connect the glass to the surface 
and we wanna select a rough color that resembles the bottle that we used as a reference. So if I bring up the image here again, we can see here we want kind of a dark brown goldish. If we want a, a if we want a better view of the material, um, we can go into render view up here. So so now in render view it looks kind of bad because we don't have any light or surfaces that the light can bounce on. So to fix this, we're gonna just create a basic backdrop. So import a plane, place the plane under the object, scale it up. Uh, not too much like this. All right, so, and go into edit mode, select the back edge here, press E to extrude as before, and extrude up. Now you can see here, we get this kind of ugly crease here. So we want to smooth that out as well using bevel. So control B and drag out. And there we go. Now add a light. We're going to use area light. Place above the object, scale up. And we want to increase the power to about 400 maybe. And this is just to view our material a little better so we can not kind of stress out about doing perfect lighting so now we can view the material a bit better so now that, now that we can see our material a little better we can start you know we can start tweak the settings here so actually the only thing that we really need to tweak is the maybe the color here because this is a bit too dark maybe like that all right, so starting with the cap, gonna select the cap, and we wanna create kind of a plastic material. And actually we can just use the uh, standard shader, uh, principle shader here. So we're gonna select the correct color, which is black, and we wanna bring the roughness down to create a, a glossy plastic look. And that's basically it. You can adjust the roughness here if you want it to be more diffused or more glossy. Now for the nozzle here, uh, I see that we are missing the little uh, hole that the uh, liquid is gonna spray, spray out of. So we're gonna go into edit mode and we're gonna do the same thing where we select the whole edge around here. And we're gonna press I to insert, bring that down and we're gonna press E to extrude and bring that back. So now we got the little nozzle thing and we're gonna add a material as well. And this is just gonna be a basic white and bring down the roughness to make it look kind of plastically. So there we go. Now we got the basic materials put down and we're gonna start doing the label. So there's a few different way you can do this. Uh, if you want to be lazy and you already have a picture with the product with a label on it, you can actually use the label in the picture uh, in your 3D model. Or if you have a separate project with the all of the graphics in a separate file, you can use that as well, which I recommend as it's often better resolution and it gives better colors. But we're going to be lazy here. To do this, we want to create the label geometry. And actually, we're just going to take some geometry of our bottle here. So to do this, we want to go back into side view. We want to go in, select the bottle, go into edit mode. And we want to select the faces where we want the label to be. So maybe from here. Also, you need to make sure you're not in x-ray mode to not select any faces behind the object so we're gonna select these ones all the way out here all right so with these faces selected we're gonna duplicate by pressing shift D so we get a duplicate of those faces and uh, now right click to make sure it stays in the same place that we had them and to make it its own object we're gonna right click 
separate by selection. Now we can go out of edit mode and select this label by itself and whoops we can actually where you go we can actually move it out of the bottle just a little tiny bit like that and now we need to scale this label to fit the one on the reference so we're going to scale it down kind of like that and we're going to add a new material so we want to add a new material and we want to click see here we go into edit mode select every vertice and assign there you go so now that we have a new material we need to add the texture of the label here so we're gonna go into shift a we're gonna search for image texture and we're gonna select our reference picture here now connect the color to base color and you can see here it looks kind of bad <laughs> because we have not aligned any of the UVs. So I'll go into edit mode again, press U and unwrap. And that will make sure all the vertices get unwrapped flatly so we can align with the image. Now go into UV editing workspace. As you can see here, we have the UVs lapping, overlapping the image here. And what we want to do is we just want to align the UVs with the label. So if we go into uh, material preview mode we can view how the alignment looks and what we want to do is we just want to use S and R to align these again so scale down R to rotate hold down control if you want to snap to an increment of 5 and scale down like that and we're going to use G to move it around An issue you may stumble across is that the label is upside down. And to fix this, we just need to rotate all the UVs 180 degree, degrees like that. All right, so if, if we're going back into object mode, we got the label right here. Looks kind of good. Um, to make it even better, we can go into the materials and we can change the roughness. So. We're going to bring the roughness up to one to make it look more like paper. And as you can see here, a downside of doing this me method is that if you have quite a low resolution image, the label is also going to be quite low resolution. Uh, so if you do have separate images or projects with the graphics, I would suggest uh, exporting them as a separate image and using them instead. The last thing is the rendering. And to do that, we need a camera. So control A and camera. And then position the viewport kind of where you want the camera to be and press control alt zero to teleport the camera to your view. And then you can use double tap G to move the camera around or double tap R to rotate the camera around. So all we have to do now is press render And we got a 3D model.